Okay, here in the Northeast, we're getting ready for that inshore uh, bluefin tuna bite. And I have here a 50 series reel that I'm getting ready to spool up. And I wanted to go through some details on how to set up and use. Uh, this is the South Chatham Tackles Super Spooler. And this is their Reel Winder too. Um, and I have figured out some details that don't come up in the instruction manual and I thought I'd share them with uh, my viewers. So stay tuned. So when you're picking a place to spool your reels, you want to you want to find a, a nice uh, clear bench area, something that you could drill into. Uh, these brackets need to be held down while you're doing this operation. You're going to hook up a, a, a decent sized drill motor onto this. This is going to be spinning. Um, you need to secure it. And uh, this is the bracket that came with the kit. And right now I have it loose to illustrate something you need to think about when setting up your work area. You need to line up the spool that you're using with your reel. And you can see here that I'm not on, on center. And sometimes you have these narrow spools that you're using. Sometimes you have these wide spools. So you need to pick a place on your bench to where you can adjust how the reel lines up with the actual spool of line. And you're trying to get it as close to center as possible. You tighten that down, before you tighten that down and that's pretty secure they go over this on the instruction video on their website if your reel came with a bracket to hold it to the reel seat uh, you're want to you're going to want to use it um, if this gets loose at all while you're reeling you're going to get this wobble that's really hard to control Now they do go over this in the video as well. You're trying to line up the center of the winder with the center axis of your reel. And if you have that off center, you're gonna get some wobbles. Just make sure everything's nice and tight. Secondly, you'll notice that I've taken the grip off of this reel. This is an Avid 50 series reel. The grip is offset. And I was finding, I'll put this on temporarily to show you, uh, it would hit the bottom here uh, when the, and actually it hits the side, although I could adjust some of that out. Could go further away, but it hits the bottom and gets bound up. So you, it's just as easy to take the grip off. Okay, they do go over this in the video. They have a nice uh, spool holder here. That one's a little loose. Uh, that, that goes into the spool on the side. Uh, some spools have holes, as they point out in the video. Some you may have to drill. Um, this big spool worked perfectly on the one that it was installed on. But if you have a different size spool, like this smaller 500 yard one, this bolt hole, if I were to drill it, would be right in the middle of the line, which is no good. So what you do is you take, this is just a little rubber cover. You need to use a uh, Allen wrench. Now there's not enough clearance on the side here to get this spool holder bolt and all the holes, but there's a set screw here on the back of this and you could slide it out. I'll take it all the way up so I can show it to you. And in here are the different holes that they've given you for various spool sizes. Now for the Power Pro spool hole, um, there, there actually isn't one that works well. The spool is just too small. We would need one actually, I was thinking about extending, getting a longer one of these bolts, but even that 
wouldn't line up with the cavity of the spool. It actually puts it right onto the edge here, which there's actually fishing line behind here, so I can't really drill right here. That would ruin the fishing line. So in this case, we're just going to uh, put it under friction. Make it as tight as we can. Okay, so if we're using this smaller spool, what I'm gonna do is just squeeze in as much as I can. The first thing you wanna look for when selecting a drill to power your reel winder is to make sure you have one with a trigger lock. You don't wanna sit there and have to hold the trigger the entire time that you're spooling a reel, especially if you're putting 2,000 yards of braid on a, on a big reel. So, most people have a cordless drill. If it doesn't have a trigger lock, like this one does not, this one does not, and this one does not, uh, I wouldn't bother using it. This is a very old, probably 35 year old uh, Makita half inch uh, corded drill. It's very low RPM, very high torque. Um, it's certainly seen some better days. Uh, it's something you can use though. Uh, this is a 3 8 drive Milwaukee corded with a trigger lock. And this is a Milwaukee mixing drill, um, half inch chuck, trigger lock, uh, definitely an option here. What I like about this drill is I can set the speed with a uh, knob versus the trigger. A lot of drills, a lot, in fact a lot of cordless drills are have variable speed motors but it's based on how hard you pull the trigger. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the clutch setting speed. Uh, these are either high or low RPM. It's really all you get. It's it's any variation or variable speed is done with how far you pull the trigger in. But this one, you get to set it through a dial knob, which is very nice. Now, this is a router speed control that I took off of my router table temporarily, just to illustrate how you can use this. And this, you basically plug your drill into this back of this uh, rheostat, and it allows you to uh, adjust the RPM of the motor. If you're going to use a corded drill that doesn't have a uh, variable speed knob, like this drill or this drill, you're going to want to use one of these. I'm going to use this, uh, but I will show you how a couple of these work. First, I'm going to show you why I'm not a fan of using a regular cordless drill. Here I have my Milwaukee uh, 3 8 cordless uh, chucked up. I have it on uh, low speed. And this doesn't have a trigger lock, so it means I'm going to have to sit here with my finger on the trigger, unless maybe I tape it shut or something, uh, while I spin the reel, and I use the other hand to wind uh, the line on evenly to the reel. I would just rather not have to have one of my hands tied up like that. So, not my first choice. In the setup video, the manufacturer recommends using a drill that has a keyed chuck, and I can see why. It's easier to do this than it is to try to hold the chuck and get it tight while you have it all mounted in place. So for this test, I'm going to use my variable speed control. By using the variable speed control and a quarter drill, I could have both hands free to manage the line onto the spool or to maybe hold the reel if it starts wobbling or maybe make a, a, an adjustment and retighten while I'm still spooling. Now here I have my mixing drill. I'm going to start at the lowest speed. Oh, how about I put a battery in it?
get the trigger lock. And I have both hands free, I could level out the line on the spool. I could make adjustments without needing to hold on to the trigger. If I need to stop it, just reach over and hit the trigger and shut it off. So out of all the drills, I think this style, and it doesn't need to be this, this drill, doesn't need to be a mixing drill, but what it needs to have is a variable uh, speed controller that's separate from the trigger. Um, you just don't want to manage that by how, uh, how far you pull the trigger in. And it does need to have a trigger lock, which actually the trigger lock only holds a drill into full RPM. So even if you have a variable speed drill, like this one, if this had a trigger lock on it, when you pull the trigger in all the way and lock it, it's going to be on full RPM. So you're really defeating the purpose. Uh, these just won't work well. You really want one that has either the variable speed controller on board, and if you don't have that, uh, get yourself one of these router speed controls. They work great, and you could use your corded drill. So here's the real winder attached to the drill in action, and you could see the importance of a trigger lock here. I really would need to have the one hand on the uh, line leveling device and have an extra hand uh, available to, to tighten the, the reel if necessary or make any adjustments. So uh, you definitely want a trigger lock. An added feature of the super spooler is you could use it to splice and serve your hollow core line. And here I'm inserting the solid core into the hollow core and you could tighten up the drag on your reel and tighten up the brakes on the spooler and create a nice work area to uh, serve the two lines together. Overall, I'm a fan of the super spooler and the rib winder. I'm a fan of how it works, uh, and I hope these uh, couple of tips help you in, in your decision to uh, buy and use one of these uh, tools. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and tight lines.